Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and this is the Crown's motion record to stay all of our actions because all of us left out of the Allard Relief should have to wait until the Allard Relief is judged before we can ask for our own. A lot of lawyering going on. Watch what happens. Okay, April the 10th. All 140 of us are getting these books. This is the Crown's motion record in response. Now, um, 138, I think they say, is the number. There's a few more by now. And uh, so they want to call it. Now, inside they call these the Termel Kits, the people. And I'm going to ask them to change the name to the Termel Gold Stars instead of the Termel Kits. Okay? Uh, more personal than the tool. And uh, they want to call the Termel Gold Stars Jacqueline Alexander and the Gold Stars. I think I'm going to have to change that. I have to ask now. You know, I want it called my Termel Gold Stars, not Jackie Alexander's Gold Stars, right? Okay, so we're going to read the Crown's response. A lot of lying in here. Lying. Here we go. Part one, overview. Her Majesty the Queen and Red of Canada requests a temporary stay of these matters pending the final disposition of another matter already underway in this court that seeks substantially similar relief. Yeah, we want repeal and they don't. A stay will avoid multiplicity of proceedings, conserve judicial and public resources by narrowing the issues for determination of these actions and limit the risk of inconsistent decisions. A stay is therefore in the interests of justice. Statement of facts. The Termel Kit claims, and I'm going to ask to change that to the Termel Gold Stars. Between February 26, 2014 and the date of writing, 135 self-represented plaintiffs commenced federal court actions by filing virtually identical statements of claim at the court registry offices in Alberta, British Columbia, Manitoba, Nova Scotia, Ontario, Quebec, and Saskatchewan. The claims seek declarations that the MMAR, which were repealed March 31st, and the MMPR, which have replaced the MMAR, are unconstitutional and that they seek permanent constitutional exemptions from the marijuana prohibitions of this in the CDSA. Actually, we seek to um, strike marijuana off the list of Schedule 2. He just doesn't seem to want to put that down so clearly like we do. Or in the further term, damages for the loss of the plaintiff's marijuana plants and production sites. In addition to their statements of claim, 30 of the plaintiffs have filed motions for interim personal constitutional exemptions from the marijuana provisions of the CVSA pending trial of their actions. Okay, 30 out of 100 and some. It appears that these plaintiffs prepared their statements of claim and motion materials by copying templates available for download from the website johntermel.com slash kits under the heading Termel's Grow Up Exemption Kits and or Legal Defense Kits. Because don't forget, I got ways of fighting your criminal charges in court, too. This website also includes links to court filing instructions. As a shorthand, these claims are referenced as the Termel Kit claims in these representations. And I'm going to get that changed to the Termel Gold Star claims. It ain't the kits claiming it, it's the gold stars, right? Allard versus Her Majesty the Queen, T-2030-13. A proceeding seeking substantially similar relief in our motion, yes, for interim relief, but not our actions. We want repeal. They don't. Allard, Her Majesty the Queen, is also currently being litigated in the federal court. So only our motions are the same, not our eventual relief. And their motion's done. The Allard plaintiffs who are represented by counsel, they got counsel initially brought a class action to challenge the Constitution of the MMPR on November 29th. On December the 10th, that was discontinued and replaced by a new claim on behalf of freedoms by unreasonably restricting access. No, no, no. We said fraudulently and genocidally. 
we don't use unreasonable. That's an ambiguous word for lawyers to use, not engineers, for medical purposes. Specifically, the allied plaintiffs, like the Termel Kit plaintiffs, allege that the MMPR restrict access by failing to provide for personal production of marijuana for medical purposes, by prohibiting outdoor production, by providing only the use of dried marijuana, and by limiting the amount of marijuana an individual can use, may store, may store, may use, carry, stores bigger, don't you know that, to 150 grams. Oh, he forgot to mention our other problems, the 16 others we have with the MMPR, while detailing the four cosmetic changes we have in common with Conroy. Like the Termel Kit plaintiffs, the Allard plaintiffs also brought a motion for interlocutory relief pending trial on behalf of all persons medically approved to possess marijuana, the Allard injunction motion. And we want it for all people who are sick and not medically approved, right? Why should we wait for the medically approved? The Allard injunction motion was the subject of an extensive evidentiary record. Yeah, a lot of paperwork. The record included detailed evidence from the plaintiffs concerning their medical diagnoses and experience obtaining and using marijuana for medical purposes. Us too. Evidence from senior Health Canada officials and evidence from experts and in disciplines including psychology, drug laws and policy, law enforcement and health economics. Jeez, and all we had was an expert opinion saying it hurts more than it helps every time. <laughs> no need any other evidence, right? Affiants were cross-examined over several days in February. The Allard injunction motion was the subject of a full-day hearing before the court that took place on March 18th, talking about a lot of unimportant stuff about four dinky cosmetic changes, and they ended up losing everything. The 150 grand they got, anyway. The court has proposed an expeditious trial of the Allard action. Scheduling directions are expected shortly, and a trial is expected within 9 to 12 months. Hey, they don't mention the appeal. That's going to take another 6 months to a year, depending if you then appeal it to the Supreme Court of Canada before it starts back below, right? Maybe 2 years. The federal court stays the Termel Kit claims. On March 7th, the court, Crampton C.J., issued a direction staying the Termel Kit claims pending the determination of the Allard injunction motion. In so doing, the court noted that the Allard injunction motion and Termel Kit's um, claims raised the very same issues. Yeah, four out of twenty. The March 7 direction also stayed any further filings motion seeking the same or similar relief on the twenty issues. We'll work on the four to start and directed that a copy of the direction be placed on all similar court files. Copies were subsequently pasted on the file in Derek Francisco, 697.14, an application for judicial review, and Bradley Hunt, 695.14, an action, both of which request relief similar to that sought by both Allard and Termel Quick Claims. Okay, Derek jumped the gun. He went and filed all his beefs against not being able to have his 200 grams a day did a real good job, but if he only waited till he'd seen mine first, he wouldn't have left out the financial claim and a whole bunch of other stuff. <sighs> In a rush, eh? Several, but nice job. Several Termel Kit plaintiffs have filed notices of appeal to appeal the March 7 direction or motions seeking extensions of time to appeal. The motions made to the Federal Court of Appeal also included requests for interim constitutional exemptions from the CDSA, although the plaintiff's request for similar relief below had not yet been adjudicated by this court. Yeah, they wouldn't, so we went higher. The Federal Court of Appeals subsequently dismissed these appeals and motions. He forgot to mention as mooted by the lifting of the stays. As if we lost on the merits. Oh, they always leave stuff out like that. That's how lying works. The amount of marijuana that can be possessed under an ATP is not limited to 150 grams. While Health Canada has appealed the court's March 21st injunction, no stay pending appeal has been sought. <laughs> Imagine them going to ask a judge to take away everybody's permission to keep growing Manson just gave them while they argue about wanting to take away <laughs> what Manson just gave them. We didn't seek a stay. <laughs> You're not going to win anyway. But anyway, good sign. 
of the 117 Termel Kit plaintiffs whose claims were received by March 26, 85 had valid licenses to produce marijuana on September the 30th with an, S, an associated valid authorization to possess on March the 21st. These plaintiffs will receive the full benefit of the Allard injunction until such time as Allard is finally dis decided or the injunction overturned on appeal. Yeah, and despite getting all those benefits, how come they're still complaining about the other 16 things that are bothering them? They should be satisfied. We've taken care of four. Why talk about the other 16 Allard didn't raise? Other claims. In addition to the Termel Kid claims, this is neat, never heard this, claims challenging the constitutionality of the MMPR have been filed in the superior courts of British Columbia, Manitoba, Ontario, and Quebec. Oh, Trotto Affidavit, paragraph 16. I'm going to go look at that right now. Tab 2. What's that about? Paragraph 16. I didn't even look at this. I'm advised by Mrs. Zabatos and do very believe that approximately 24 claims challenging the constitutionality of the MMPR have been filed in provincial courts across the country. Several of these claims have been stayed on consent pending the disposition of Allard. Oh, we should do. Attaches Exhibit J, copy of the order, staying Raj Kaur Daliwal and Her Majesty the Queen, CD this, pending the disposition of Allard. Exhibit K, copy of Sujit Thaliwal, pending the disposition of Allard. And L, a copy of Andrew Brian Dobson, uh, pending the final disposition of Allard. So, three out of 24 claims that were somehow filed in provincial superior courts have been stayed pending Allard while the other 21 are going on. I have no idea who filed these things in Superior Court, but sounds like fun. Okay, wow. British Columbia, Manitoba, Ontario, and Quebec. To date, the courts have issued orders on consent of the parties staying three of these actions pending the final disposition of Allard motions to stay several others that have been scheduled for the coming weeks. Points in issue. The sole issue on this motion is whether these proceedings should be stayed pending the final disposition of Allard. Preliminary issue. Several of the Termel Kit claims have been filed as simplified actions. That's under 50 Gs. Canada submits that these actions should not have been filed as such because they seek constitutional declarations and are therefore not exclusively for monetary relief. Well, I just went and dropped that line where you could put an X if it was under 50 Gs. You don't need to do that no more. Fixed. <laughs> as they should not have been filed as simplified actions, Canada submits that the rule ordinarily precluding motions prior to the close of pleadings in a simplified action ought not apply in this case. And unfortunately, urgency trumps all rules if the judge says so. Don't waive rules at a judge. The interest of justice require a stay. The federal court may stay proceedings on the ground that the same claim is being pursued in another court. Well, actually, their same claim is over for their interim exemption, and they lost because they didn't ask for the right without limitation. They didn't ask for the right limitation. Why can't ours go forward for the same claim with more stuff that they lost? We're trying to win. Are you saying we lost too? So, and finally, the power to issue a temporary stay of proceedings is a discretionary power, as Stratus explained in this case, blah, blah, blah. In Hollinger, blah, blah, blah. You know, why, any, why stays can be given. Okay, in circumstances, each of these factors favors a stay. The Allard and Termel kit claims involve substantially similar facts and issues. Substantially similar. We got 20 beefs. They got four. Do you call that substantially similar? So, that's a misstatement or a miss... Uh, lying again. Okay, 
Both are concerned with the repeal of the MMAR. No, ours is. Theirs is concerned with against MMAR repeal. Got him in a contradiction, right? <laughs> anyway, the introduction of the MMPR. Yeah, we're concerned with that both. Us 20 beefs, them four. And the impact of these legislative changes on the plaintiff's ability to access. And we got 20 impacts we want to mention. The Allard claim, therefore, has the potential to significantly narrow the issues for determination of Trammell Kit claims. Yeah, 4 out of 20 is significantly reducing it, isn't it, in the eyes of a lawyer? <laughs> Furthermore, a temporary stay avoids the risk of inconsistent outcomes as between Allard and the Trammell Kit claims. Yeah, they left out the left outs in the Allard, and we don't want any inconsistent outcomes letting them back in, right? A stay would conserve judicial and public resources. To date, there have been 135 Termel Kit claims and 30 interlocutory motions filed at the federal court registry offices in seven provinces. There appears to be significant likelihood of more such claims and motions. The sheer number of claims and motions has potential to consume considerable judicial and public resources. The other guys want to keep prohibition, just give it up. You got a lot of angry people out there and another 29,900 to go. The potential cost is compounded in the charter context. The Supreme Court of Canada has emphasized that a proper factual record is essential to a proper consideration of charter issues. In Allard, the plaintiff's injunction motion alone involved an extensive evidentiary record consisting of detailed evidence from the plaintiffs, senior Health Canada officials, see how they like repeating stuff, and several experts. It is reasonable to assume that the Tremel Kid claims will require the preparation of evidentiary similar in volume, actually five times more than four, right? In these circumstances, it is respectfully submitted that Allard, which is well underway already, because we were stopped, is the proper case to determine the overlapping four factual and legal issues out of 20. <laughs> no prejudice to the Termel Kit plaintiffs. Now the good stuff. Why there's no prejudice to Lawrence with his 200 gram limit? Why there's no prejudice to the left outs who are going to have to wait a year or two before getting their grows back? You know what I mean? Whoa, this is going to be fun. Why there's no prejudice to the ATPs who don't want to live under cancel by LPs if they don't have to? And all the other lousy stinking conditions they got to live under. So... Pleadings in the Allard have now closed, and a schedule of the next steps is expected shortly. A trial is expected within 9 to 12 months, well, after they get back from the repeals, right? A stay of the Termel Kid claims is therefore likely to be brief, a lousy year for people not getting their grows back. That's all. Brief. Several Termel Kid plaintiffs have brought motions for interim constitutional exemptions from the CDSA pending trial other actions. In Allard, the court dismissed as inappropriate the same request for relief. Yes, Allard asked for exemption to traffic to kids in the streets without limitation. And we asked for exemption to sample and try different strains and seeds for personal medical use. The same relief. Mr. Justice Manson found that the proposed exemption was without limitation by Conroy and would exempt the plaintiffs from the CDSA without regard to medical need, like our limitation would. Judicial Committee precludes the Termel Kid plaintiffs from obtaining this interim relief. We're not asking for without limitation like Conroy blew it. We're asking for with personal medical use like I got it right. And thus, a stay that prevents their interlocutory motions from proceeding cannot be said to cause them any prejudice. Yeah, a year down the road, maybe the guys who are dead could argue they've been prejudiced, eh? Haven't had my grow up for a year and I died. Wow, no prejudice there. Although it denied the request for interim constitutional exemptions from the CDSA, 
without limitation. The court in Allard partly granted the plaintiff's request for an injunction, preserving any current valid authorizations, current, but no leftouts, who were bluffed into shutting down to possess and produce marijuana for medical purposes. How are they going to explain the leftouts? This injunction extends to all persons authorized on the relevant dates to possess and produce marijuana, including many of the Termel Kit plaintiffs. Yeah, but a lot of them the left outs. They don't have their ATPs and grows no more. And the ones who do, well, they're unhappy with the conditions we got to live under, right? As a stay of their actions is likely to be brief, only a year for people to die. And they currently have the benefit of the Allard injunction. Yeah, those with ATPs, but what about those without? A stay pending Allard cannot be said to prejudice the Termel Kit plaintiffs except those that die and, or get worse. Furthermore, to the extent that the Tremel Kit plaintiffs may have raised any issues that might not be fully addressed in the Allard action. Oh, the other 16! A stay pending final disposition has the potential to assist these self-represented plaintiffs by significantly narrowing the issues for determination in their actions. Significantly, four out of 20 is just so significant when you're lying. Finally, the NMPR been in place since June 2013. It was therefore open to the Tremel Kid plaintiffs, like the plaintiffs in Allard, to bring their claims and motions much earlier. It's not open to plaintiffs who have waited several months to bring their claims to argue that they will be prejudiced by a further brief delay. Wow. Well, when the prejudice involves death, the disposition of another matter. Part four, the applicant requests an order staying these proceedings and any new proceedings seeking the same or similar relief pending final disposition of Allard. Costs of this motion, if opposed. <laughs> any gain in not opposing it? Because as soon as their motion is stayed, we get to go to the Court of Appeal and jump right over. Hmm. Just dawned on me. What if we consented to the stay? <laughs> and then filed our notices of appeal. Anyway, this is really stupid because the court lifted the 125 stays because in the first day, nine of us jumped into the Federal Court of Appeal. Fifteen had jumped into the Federal Court of Appeal after the first day that lasted two weeks, and in nine within the first day of the second stay that lasted three days. And now these clown attorneys are going to ask a judge to give us all that stepping stone back into one step away from the Supreme Court of Canada. Again, after the court just took it away. Are they nuts? Anyway, they want this done in writing. So I got 10 days to respond. Well, how? I could say, let's have our hearing and not worry about what they're yakking about, but they're going to say we want to go first. So I'm going to respond quickly. And you've heard basically what most of it's going to be about, but I'm going to prepare a kit so you can point out, if you're a left out, what you don't like about Allard not helping you. Now, I'm the only healthy guy so far, so I got my own, you know what I mean? But if you're a left out, you want your grow back. And you don't want to wait a year. What a great case. Lawrence, Derek, you both got 200 grand prescriptions. You ain't left out. You're screwheads. How do you get your prescription? Ever. So that's great stuff. How are they going to explain why he should wait a year? So, and all the people who have ATPs can say, why do I have to yearly renew? Why do I have no DIN? Why do I you know, have to still have a doctor? Why do I still need medical special? All this stuff out of the MMAR they used to need. So they can complain about all these lousy, stinking things that have affected them in the new legislation that Conroy forgot. Go through the 20, pick out the ones he forgot, and tell us about the other ones that are afflicting you if you're on an ATP. And if you're not, well, wonderful. Why can't you have your grow back because you got left out? And they didn't grandfather the ATPs with the grows because you're licensed there. You could be legal with a grow, but you can't have it because you got no ATP. Whoa, 
They're going to try and argue all those people shouldn't get their relief. Notice they didn't actually face any of it. And that's why it's best if people file a motion record in response explaining their personal details about why they should have an interim exemption because Allard A didn't help them at all, me and the non-ATPs, and Allard only took four of four cosmetic changes out of 20 and the rest are going to kill you. So, there, everybody gets in and has that kind of argument as a response to their motion record. Easy document, you file online, they have a few days if they want to reply, there won't be much reply possible. But at least this gets to a judge. And then the judge looks at your thing saying, I didn't renew on February the 28th because I couldn't do a growth cycle in one month. And when I found out if I had, I would have been in on the Allard relief. Well, I end up screwed a medically established needy patient because I was left out. And I need my interim exemption while my case goes forward because I am left out. What's a judge going to say if you file your motion record in response? Do these guys have any chance at all to stop you getting your grow back? No. I mean, you should have had it. You were screwed royally. And this is the greatest chance with the crown putting up this stupid in writing motion for you to put down every piece of tort you've suffered, you're going to suffer under the new laws, and get it on record. So a judge has no reason to say, nah, sure, he got bluffed out, you know, he didn't, it's too bad, he's not going to get it back, let him die. No judge is going to do that if you get your story on file, and the Crown have now given you the opportunity to do that. So I'm going to be preparing motion kits in response. we got two weeks. Okay, we're aiming for the 22nd to eliminate all nightmares, but in the meantime, we'll get your motion kits in response where you'll be able to add all your personal details so that the judge can't dismiss this all in one shot because the healthy guy doesn't need it, okay? Anyway, that's where we are right now, and uh, so I'm going to be updating the affidavits. Now, I'm suggesting everybody, if you're going to go get an N4, motion record filed so they have to file a big response on you too and don't forget their statements of defense are due after 30 days unless they were within the two week stay or even the three day period stay i never thought of that so i'm actually in 14th mm. and but they have to have big book statement of defense big book motion record big book uh motion response to your motion if you file your n4 so why not add to the pressure? And the beauty of still going out and filing your N4 now is that when you go down to the commissioner to do the one hard part, swear your affidavit and get the stamp, you can do both your appeal and your federal court motion at the same time. So when we walk into court, hell, you can even add your documentation. I got my notice of appeal ready to do like we did the last two times if you stay my interim exemption, Your Honor. And I got my motion record sworn, ready to go. What's a judge going to do? Say, yeah, okay, go ask another judge. It can't. So, anyway, get your motion number four and four filed. Follow the instructions. Get your N5 ready. So when you go into court, you got your notice of appeal and your motion record of appeal ready to... As soon as he says, stay, walk downstairs, pay your 50 bucks and you're in. Asking the same thing from a higher judge. So... There's really absolutely nothing they can do to stop legitimately sick people from asking a judge for an interim exemption who got screwed, whether it be at the bottom within a week or two or would it be at the Court of Appeal within another week or two, okay? Everybody gets their chance. Crown can't stop them, especially those who don't benefit from the Allard's in injunction, right? So anyway, that's where we are. They can't win. They're stupid for having made the motion that's going to make them do all this work for nothing, as well as give us a chance to basically present our responses to their issues and point out that, gee, didn't explain anywhere how the 150 gram I'm supposed to live with with a 200 gram exemption. 
didn't explain how I'm going to get my girl back for a year. And I'm sick. I had one before. Got bluffed out. Nothing. They didn't cover anything. And you get to make them cover it by filing your upcoming N4 and N5. So, wait for my instructions. I'm going to update those kits so that you can now talk about they're trying to get a stay and uh, how you don't fit in. Well, it's, just, it's already in there now that I think about it in general that that relief ain't covered. So, it'll just be a standard motion of response with a spot where you can stick in your own personal details. And then the judge has to deal with that personally. He can't just simply screw everybody all at once. So, upcoming soon, that's an update of the Crown's weak move. And uh, right now, the only thing we can do is work on the Allard 4 to get ready to pick up our Gatling gun and put down their damn pea shooter and strip Canada, Health Canada of their protection, their shield, while they're unprepared. They don't have sufficient supply. If the MMPR is put into effect and they got to prove it works, they can't. And the only thing stopping them from collapsing is the Allard support. So we got to get those four people to abandon their victory for Health Canada that they got suckered into believing was a win for us and picking up the real artillery and helping us blow them away. So those are the two things we got to do. Convince the Allard Four to give up Health Canada's protection and start filing those N4s and N5, get ready with the N5s so we guarantee you get heard on your personal issues.